This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review and this is the new Amazon Kindle DX Graphite. The DX is the large 9.7 inch screen e-ink model offered by Amazon and they've updated the DX to change the color. The surround is now graphite and to put in a new display that offers 50% higher contrast using e-ink Perl technology. Before we take a look at the display itself, we're going to take a look at the unit and as you can see the design is identical to the original Amazon Kindle DX. You have your home button here, your page back and forward, a little joystick for navigation, the menu button, your back button, and the keyboard over here. It's very thin. Weighs just a bit less than the iPad. Back here it's kind of aluminum, brush aluminum finish with the antenna cap and darker plastic. Got the micro USB port here and the stereo speaker grills. Volume controls for audible books and music. And here's the power slider and the three and a half millimeter stereo headphone jack. Now well, let's take a look at the display itself. For those of you who are new to the Kindle, it has a 3G wireless, courtesy of AT&T. You do not have to pay any monthly fees to use that. It allows you to download books from Amazon Shop. Uh, you can email yourself documents as well. And you can use this to browse the web. It's not exactly the world's greatest web browsing experience, but it's great in a pinch for looking up something on the Wikipedia, catching up on some news, and that kind of thing. We'll take a look at the web browser briefly in a minute, though that has not changed from the previous DX model. It's running firmware 2.5.5. can hold up to 3,500 books and it sells for $379, which is considerably cheaper than the DX used to sell for. So here's our home screen over here. You can see I've created a collection up here called Manuals. That's something new with the updated firmware. You can actually create collections now, uh, anything that you want, and you can put books in more than one collection. So you can have one that's mystery novels, and then another one that's Stephen King, and he can appear in both. So we're going to take a look first at a Amazon novel. So you can see the contrast is indeed improved. Now the background is still obviously light gray. This does not look white in person. It's not going to look white if you get it. What is improved is the darkness really. The fonts themselves are quite a bit darker and in images we'll show you in a bit. The blacks are really black and the gradations of gray levels in images, particularly photographs, is much improved also. This feels easier to read. It's clearer. It feels sharper thanks to the enhanced contrast and the darker fonts. It's a very nice evolution of the e-ink technology. It's not revolutionary. It's not like, oh my gosh, a night and day change in technology. But if, if you give most people this and the older screen side by side, they're easily going to say, oh, give me this. This is really much easier to read in low light. So if you want to read at night and you don't want to turn all the lights on in the room or clip on that book light, often you don't need the LED book light anymore, where I found that it did with pretty much every other e-ink reader on the market. So we have text here. You can see the boldness of the stroke. You can see the page turn here. The social networking annotations are turned on, so that's what you're seeing here in the lighter gray. You can turn those off if you don't want to know what everybody else is highlighting in a given book. And this does have an accelerometer, as with the previous DX. If you hit the font change button here, you can choose between these many font sizes. Right now we're using quite a small font size. I'm going to increase that. And you can see here I can set the screen rotation to auto or pick any of the orientations and lock it to that. So there we are at a slightly larger font. Next we're going to take a look at some PDFs. This is a novel from the library in PDF format, minus DRM. So you can see this is at the default zoom level right here, and it's very readable in the layout. It's quite beautiful. You don't really need to use the zoom feature. However, just in case you needed it, hit the font change button again, and you can do a visual zoom. This is not changing the font size. This is doing an actual zoom on the page, and you'll get a rectangle drawn on the screen. The size of the rectangle depends on the zoom level that you've chosen. So we're going to choose 200% here. 
So it gives me a selection rectangle right here, and I move that around and select the part that I want to zoom in on. Clearly this is not the way that you want to read. This is useful for zooming in on illustrations and diagrams and technical manuals and in textbooks, but it's not the way that you're going to want to read text. Now we'll take a look at that again in a computer user guide, which is a more appropriate use of that feature. And here you can see that the text is small, but it's quite sharp and readable. But nonetheless, if you wanted to zoom in on that, say, to see this illustration better or to read any of this text, you could do so. I'm going to do 150% zoom this time. There's the selection rectangle. Since the zoom level isn't as high, the selection rectangle is relatively large compared to the page size itself. And there's everything still with the layout intact, sharp and large. It does not zoom across page breaks. It's something like the Sony Reader, where it's, it's zoom only for the given page that you're viewing at the time. back to normal size, and if you want to see the page term with PDFs that have fairly complex layout and diagrams, here it is. It's definitely fast. I'd say this is faster than the old Kindle DX. If you want to see it in landscape mode. So that's PDFs on the Kindle DX Graphite. I just wanted to take a look at the newspaper so we can see some photographic illustrations. So here we are in the New York Times. I can go to the front page. And there's a photograph on the screen. And you can see that it's really very nice with the levels of gray that you're getting here. It's, it's much more like a photograph and more natural than I've seen on any other e-ink reader so far. And you can see how bold the bold faces are in the masthead as well. Next we're going to take a look at the web browser. The features really have not changed from the old Kindle, but just so you can see how things look on the screen. The browser by default launches in mobile mode, much like an old feature phone web browser that's uh, more compatible with websites than anything else. We'll switch it to non-mobile mode, so you can see what that looks like. But first we'll go to the Wikipedia, in mobile mode. And again, internet access is free, there's no additional charge to use this. If you want to select a link, you just use the joystick to move to whatever particular link you're interested in. Click down and it will open that page. And then we'll visit our own website and first it's going to load it in mobile mode so it's going to look pretty strange. And then we'll switch over to desktop mode. So there we are in unglorious mobile mode. And then we'll switch to desktop mode. While we're waiting for that to reload, I'm going to mention about PDFs. Uh, Amazon still has not added support for PDF table of contents, which is unfortunate. Maybe they should hire a couple of engineers from IREX to evolve that feature. Given the large display, this would be the, the best PDF viewing tool on the market if they could add a few more PDF viewing features. 
As with all previous Kindles, this does have a dictionary built in. You can use the joystick to move to any word that you want when you're in a book to look up a definition that works in Amazon Books, Moby Books. It does not work in PDFs. So there we have our site finally loaded in desktop mode. We'll switch to landscape view, make it more like a typical web page. And for some reason it's decided it needs to reload. There it goes. So that's the Amazon Kindle DX Graphite. It's on sale now. It's available from Amazon in the United States and a couple of other countries. And I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website to read the full review.